Yes, hello and welcome to another vlog from Ben Ryder. Today well, we're testing out the uh, Nerva X, uh, it is an electric scooter, maxi scooter actually with 9 kilowatts of power. Uh, first of all I would like to thank Navarro Hermanos in Malaga for this test ride. Thank you very much Navarro Hermanos. If you, have, uh, if you are in the market for electric motorcycles, scooters, bicycles actually they also have uh, Yamaha. They are a dealer, official dealer from Yamaha and also Peugeot. Then please uh, have a look at Navarro Hermanos in Malaga. So let's have some info here on this Nerva X, a 9 kilowatt motor. Uh, apparently the company is from Spain uh, where it is manufactured, I can imagine. But uh, it, it is not clear that they are actually manufactured in Spain, so I cannot say anything about this. From the looks, from the outside looks, it looks uh, pretty nice. Inside, I will show you later. And uh, we have kind, kind of a resemblance a little bit sometimes, especially about the uh, instrument panel from the uh, Puma, the Ifan Puma. So maybe they use the same parts there. I am not sure. Um, yeah. Uh, the peak power of this can go up to 12 to 16.1 kilowatts and we, we can reach a maximum speed of 125 kilometers an hour. This guy has three different riding modes. We have eco mode, we have normal mode and we have sports mode. Uh, I will tell you about the autonomy in these modes just a second. In the eco mode, when we switch it to eco, we can go a maximum of 50 kilometers an hour and the range is 150 kilometers. When we switch it to the second mode, normal mode, uh, we can go a maximum of 80 kilometers an hour <coughs> and can go and it has a range of 115 kilometers. If we switch it to sports mode, we can go to the maximum, which is about 125 kilometers an hour and we can go, the range is about 75 kilometers. About the battery quickly, it is a 70.8 volt, 75 ampere hours battery, uh, 5.76 kilowatt hours, that is 2.88 times two, meaning we have two batteries inside. We cannot uh, take them out to charge them, we have to charge them in the scooter, uh, and we have about 6,000 charging cycles. The battery has a warranty of five years. Uh, about the other technical specs here we have um, oh, also the um, charging time for the battery 
from 0 to 100 is 4.2 hours. The, the total weight of the scooter is 202 kilos. The, uh, uh, the seat height is 800 millimeters. We have a CBS braking system. We do not have ABS, unfortunately. Uh, the tires are 120 15 inch in the front and 140 14 inch in the rear. Now about the pricing here in Spain, it is sold uh, on the road for 7,280 euro. Uh, you can also uh, get a Plan Renove, which means you get a sub subsidy, I think it's called, isn't it? Or a discount from the government about for, for e scooters or um, um, motorcycles and scooters of 1,100 euro. So you can uh, reduce that price by that 1,100 euro here in Spain. Also, you can rent the battery that reduces the price, uh, which would be 4,780 euro and you pay 39.90 for the battery uh, for five years per month. And uh, yeah, so that is the renting with the battery. So on the left hand side, we have the brake lever for the rear brake, which is very, very, very tight and uh, feels very powerful and strong. It gives you a good feeling of braking safety or security. Uh, about the controls, the controls are not of a high, a very high standard. It's okay, but uh, it could be better actually. Uh, we have the high beam, low beam switch here. We do not have a switch for the uh, passing lights. Uh, we don't have we don't have a passing light switch. We do have a hazard light switch here. We have the turn signal switch, which is again pretty flimsy and you have to set it to the middle and sometimes that is kind of difficult to do it with uh, when you're wearing gloves. I don't like this kind of switches on a motorcycle. And we also have the uh, uh, the horn here. We have uh, included on the on the in the horn button the parking uh, switch here. That means uh, when you're standing still you put it on P so the gas or the throttle will not activate by mistake. On the right hand side we have the throttle here. We have two buttons which don't have any use at the moment. We have the uh, mode switch here. One, two, three, eco, normal and sport. And we have the starter switch here and we have a reverse switch so you can go in reverse a little bit. Yes, about the display unfortunately when the sun is coming from behind, it is not easy to read. Uh, it apparently is a TFT display and that's one of the disadvantages. On the left hand side, we have a regular uh, speedometer dial. On the right, we have a power dial in kilowatts and it also shows the regeneration, which goes back into the battery. In the middle, we have the TFT display. Uh, we can see, if we can see <laughs> in the middle, very dominantly, the uh, remaining battery uh, percentage. We also have in the on the left hand side, we can see P, D and R. So D is for drive and R is reverse. At the moment we are in P and we also show the, uh, the speed in a digital format. Unfortunately, all of these numbers are fairly small. The display is fairly big, but the numbers are very small. The odometer reading down below on the left lower corner is even smaller and also the trip is very small and the display is very big. I don't know, why are you doing this, people? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. Apparently you can connect it with your phone and no, nobody told me anything about this, so I'm sorry, I cannot say anything about this. Uh, there's not much to, to sw switch, to change in the display. You can reset the trip and I think that's about it. So let's get to the storage space. In the middle, we have the ignition switch with the fuel cap, well, it shows here fuel. We can also open up the seat here. We can, let's uh, open up the fuel cap here. So let's open up the fuel cap here so you can see, you can charge it at home. Um, you get, actually the cable is included in the price. You can charge it at home or you can charge it uh, in public places, public charging places, that is no problem. From zero to 100. It takes about four hours and 20 minutes. 
So storage space wise, we don't have anything in the front. Now no cubby holes at all. We can only open up the seat here. The seat seems to make, uh, leaves a good impression and um, it feels nice, nice uh, to the touch. And uh, so let's look inside the uh, seating compartment here. Underneath the seat, we have space for one full-sized helmet We're on, on, in the rear here. Uh, I fit my uh, Shark a Spartan already. I will put a picture up on the screen for you now. It fits and we have space for a small jet helmet in the front. Unfortunately, we cannot fit two uh, full-faced helmets in there. But it's uh, the biggest space I have seen on any electric scooter so far and so I'm very happy to see that we have finally have some space underneath the seat and not just only see the batteries there. So this is the Enerva Exe 9 kilowatt electric scooter, maxi scooter actually pretty big and a lot of storage space underneath the seat. So let's go back to the dealer now. So let's turn it on and as you can see, I don't know if you can see anything, the display is not that easily readable in the a direct sunlight. Um, let's get it started. Let's see if we just push this button. Oh, it, it works already. We don't have to push this button. I don't know what this is for actually. Uh, let's put it on normal mode. We will go, on, go down the hill normal. We do the 0 to 100 check and I put it in sports before that. So, so the first thing that you notice when you get on the seat the seat is fairly hard, uh, leaves a good impression though from the touch. Um, the seat seating position is like on a toilet. You can actually stretch your feet or your, your legs and feet up to the front. But for me, it is actually not the, con the correct angle of attack here. Uh, I am 175, I weigh about 80 kilos. But for me, as with the Forza and with the X-Max, this uh, angle is not good so I just uh, keep sitting here on uh, as on a toilet I don't really like the way they they put up these uh, these uh, this angle the foot the foot pads there what's the other thing that you notice immediately when you get on the scooter is that the balancing of the scooter seems to be very high I don't know why because the batteries they must be in down below because there's nothing up here uh, <laughs> but it feels that the center of gravity is very up here and it does not actually leave a very good impression to be honest. Uh, it feels kind of unstable also at higher, uh, higher speeds I will show you later. Um, it does not feel very stable with this kind of center of gravity which is kind of strange and I don't like. Of course you can get used to this uh, but uh, it is uh, you really uh, you feel this when you first get on the scooter and you've been on other scooters before that the center of gravity seems to be off somehow on this one here. It has fairly large tires, I think four, uh, 15 and 14 in the rear. It, but although in corners it does actually feel like a Vespa and it uh, kind of seems like you want to tip over, although you probably you won't, but you know, it, it kind of leaves the impression there. The display, if there's no direct sunlight on the display, of course the dials you can see easily, the middle you can see also see easily, the uh, odometer and the trip reading is too small. I mean, I can still see it, but it is definitely too small. The display is so big, why is it so small? I don't know. Uh, it is kind of strange. I do think this whole mass of the instrument panel actually they took from the Puma because I think that's about the same size as from the Puma. So we have very nice foot pa pegs for the pillion. I forgot to mention actually uh, earlier on. Um, they are very big and sturdy. So, so if you travel with a pillion, it is probably pretty good. Uh, gives a good footing for the pillion. And um, about the windscreen, I can tell you later on the highway it is very bad unfortunately it has lots of turbulences maybe you can uh, move it up a notch or so but i don't think very much it seems like maybe as with the x max you can move it up maybe an inch or something but still it is very very low you get very many turbulences and uh, yeah it does not feel good the motor 
is actually very powerful 9 kilowatt I think you actually notice that it is not bad it's much better than any other I mean all the 3 kilowatts naturally you know they're much uh, they have much less power but or naturally uh, this is a 9 kilowatt can go up to 16 peak so that's quite a beast unfortunately the the range of it still is not very big uh, so the maximum range if you maybe if you actually want to travel and say okay well, if I want to travel I will definitely put it on sport mode in sport mode you can go up to 125 kilometers an hour but you can only get 75 kilometers <laughs> and that's not really that far so 75 kilometers and then you have to charge for four hours and 20 minutes again so that is not too good anyways uh, let's concentrate uh, on the scooter here a little bit uh, i will show you the braking performance with the cbs also the zero to 100 hopefully i can show you later on uh, when we're down there let's brake yeah so braking also helps with the regeneration not always i think uh, but this is very noticeable here at least in the display <laughs> we apparently we have very nice battery on this one from the uh, company called but or byd uh, apparently a very big uh, battery company and uh, they last uh, very long we have five years of warranty on the batteries and we can uh, uh, basically put six thousand uh, charge cycles on the batteries so that is pretty nice and much more than any with any other any uh, any other battery i would say yeah even the mode number two normal is pretty nice especially for these uh twisty roads here hills it is definitely quite nice it goes up to 80 so you don't need more you don't need more power for this pretty darn nice sport mode yeah when you want to go up faster and that's what we're going to try out pretty soon now. Very, very good braking power. And almost, I mean, I didn't hear anything. It kind of felt a little bit like it, but I didn't hear any slipping of the tire. So very, very good, uh, strong performance of the CBS braking system. Unfortunately, as I said, no ABS. And I don't understand why, but CBS, very good. Yeah, after you get used to it, the corners do feel actually quite nice with it, but still uh, you do feel that the uh, balance, uh, the center of gravity is very much up there. It feels like it is actually in the handlebar, the center of gravity. And I don't really like this feeling. And go. pretty big pretty strong regeneration when we're in sport mode I think that's with all of the sport modes like that uh, if I get off the throttle you can see that it goes into regeneration mode um, yeah as I told you before I don't think it's very stable at higher speeds because of the center of gravity I don't like it also the windscreen is kind of terrible And I, as you can hear, maybe from my sound on the on the uh, of the microphone, it is very loud and noisy. I have maximum power now. Go up a steep incline here, but nevertheless, we're going at 100 kilometers already, so that's not too bad. But I have basically have to scream into the microphone. It is really, really loud because of this. Yeah, get the wind to the middle of my visor, basically. So, 
These are my first impressions on the Nerva X uh, e-scooter with 9 kilowatts of power. I would say that's about it for my test right now. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you have any more questions about this e-scooter, please put it in the comments down below and let me know. This is it. Thanks very much for watching. This is Ben Rideout. Take care. Bye-bye.